Welcome to the Z Hut. Today, we're going to take a look at a countdown timer that I designed. I specifically put this together for myself as a kitchen timer. I kept buying the cheap ones that had the magnet sticks on the fridge, which is right next to the stove. And they'd last a month or two and quit working. I tried several different. I got tired of it. Finally, I decided to put one together myself. And I'm sure this is going to outlast all of them. Now, I am also working on some new code, which will allow this to be a count up and count down timer. But right now for today, we're just taking a look. It's a countdown timer with an alarm. Now, the enclosure is 3D printed. Um, you can use this without it. You know, you just come up with your own enclosure. But for the files, look in the description below. You'll find a link to this project's webpage. And on there, you can find this enclosure. The uh, enclosure, you will have to drill the hole for the uh, push button and the rotary encoder. But it is already ready for mounting the LCD screen. That is already cut into it. And it will have the holes for the screws. You will also need to make a hole wherever you want on there. <coughs> <coughs> excuse me for your power supply you could put a battery pack on the back of this run two double a's and then put a dc step up converter inside to run it up to five volts that would work as well but i plan i've got a little shelf right next to the stove and there's a plug in there and i'm going to be using this a lot so i just went with a wall wart now optionally too you could put some little rubber feet on there these are just furniture feet pads I got in a local unclaimed freight store. All right, let's take a look at how it works. And then we'll open it up. I'll show you the insides. And then we'll go over. I'll take a, a quick uh, walkthrough of just some basic parts of the code because in case you want to put uh, the push button on a different pin for some reason. But also to calibrate the clock because this does not have a clock module in it. Um, so I guess, well, technically you're not calibrating the clock. We're calibrating how it counts to determine. Because by using the delays as we go through, it actually takes a millisecond or two every time it runs through the code. So we're not running 1,000 milliseconds. Um, I'm running 900. I think it was 98 for mine worked out. But you might need to raise that or lower it one or two depending which Arduino board you use. But we'll get to that in a moment. All right. When you turn it on, you'll get this screen, and it'll start out. Oops. Now, you see once it hits zero, and we're on hours right now, it won't go any lower. And uh, I do believe, if I remember right, I have it set for a maximum of 99 hours. I don't know why you would need to cook anything for 99 hours, but it does go that high. Um... Now, when it starts out, it's on hours. As you can see there, you can go up or down. Then just push the, the rotary encoder, because um, we're using a rotary encoder that has a built-in push button. And now you see it goes to minutes. And that is set for a maximum of 60 minutes and a minimum of zero, so it won't go into the negatives. Then for seconds, if you're timing something down to the second, and the way I have this set, um, I ran it for an hour and I was just a matter of, you know, like two seconds, three seconds off at the end of the hour. That is pretty accurate for not using a clock module. So, all right, I'm going to load 10 seconds on here now to start it. We'll push the yellow button here. And you can see it'll start counting down. Now, while it's counting, if you push it, it pauses it. Oh, I held it too long. Well, <laughs> let me show you that again. It's a little tricky because you have to have the button down and have it held when it hits to that part of the code that it's checking. And if you keep holding it down too long, it will start cycling again. I'm going to go ahead and start it. There we go. I got it that time. You... you you might have to, after you use it once or twice, you probably get the hang of what I mean, is you got to hold it down for about a half a second to three quarters of a second. You just don't want to hold it down too long. But it, you see how it paused at five seconds? Well, you can change 
if you wanted to add, I mean, you can change add hours, add minutes. Put that down to zero. And then just hit it and resume. And when it hits zero, you can hear the audio alarm. And that's what that little hole is right there. I'll show you in a minute. It's one of those little piezo speakers. Um, these were made for for being in a computer. That's when you start it up, you hear that beep. Or if something's not working right, it'll beep multiple times. That's what we're using is one of those little piezo speakers. So I just drilled a little tiny hole that was about the size of the hole in it. And we'll see when we open this up what it looks like. But yeah, to shut the alarm off, just push the button momentarily and it'll shut it off. All right, um, well the code and the schematic for this, everything, just look in the description below. There's a link to the web page. Uh, I'll have a parts list on there as well. But uh, why don't we uh, open this up and I'll show you the insides here because I think we've went over everything and how it works. And I will be making a, another code that will allow you, um, when the screen first starts, you'll be able to select count up or count down and then go through. I didn't bother putting a reset button. If for some reason you want to reset it, it's just simple as unplugging it and then plug it back in. All right. Oh, before I forget, the knob right here is also 3D printed. Uh, there's tons of them to select um, Thingiverse. Uh, I went and designed my own. <coughs> um, I don't have it loaded up on there as of now. Once I do, I will add a link to it, to the this project. But for now, you can go on uh, Thingiverse. It's a uh, six millimeter rotary encoder knob. There's a whole bunch of them on there. Oh, and the LCD is a 1602. That's 16 characters by two lines. And you can get a variety of colors nowadays. There's the backlight uh, blue and the backlit green. But now they have some that have come out where there's no black light, there's no color, backlit color, excuse me. But you can get like red lettering, green lettering, yellow lettering. They're a little more expensive. They haven't been out that long, but they are cool looking. I have some ordered, but they haven't come in yet. Let's, oops, open this up. There we go. Gently remove the cover. Now when you print the cover out, if you're using my project enclosure for this, you'll have to lightly sand around the edges. And I do mean lightly, it don't take much because it'll be super snug. And I left it as an exact measurement so <clears throat> to smooth it out because your corners will stick out just a little bit. Just take some light sandpaper. It takes less than a minute just to sand around all four edges and it will fit perfectly then. Right, we'll open this up. Try to fold the cover forward. And as you can see, here's the 1602 LCD display. And this, um, we are using one that has the I2C communication module on it. Um, you want to use the I2C. It just simplifies this whole project. You can see there's the little piezo speaker. It's very small. There's the rotary encoder with the push button. And there is the push button right there. And the main brains of this, we are using an Arduino Nano. And I found for this project, one of those terminal boards that you can plug the Nano into works great for this. And we don't have any components to add to it. So I didn't really see a need of having a bread to solder it together. These um, are almost as cheap as a breadboard. I mean, they're not much more. And they work great. <laughs> great for this project. Also allows you to remove the Nano and replace it if it does quit working. Um, I'm imagining this is going to work for a long, long time. The only thing I did, um, this is we have a lot of grounds. I got a little tiny wire nut here and all the grounds go to this and then I just have one line because these terminals are only really made to have one or two wires stuck into each one. 
All right, like I said, on the web page, you will find the schematic for this on how to put it together, what pins to connect it to, and everything like that. So let's go over to the computer real quick, and I'll just show you there the, just a couple spots in there, uh, mainly where you can select um, the timer delay, how much delay time for counting the seconds. And uh, there really isn't anything else you're going to want to change in the, in the sketch. Uh, and also, when I get the new one done that's count up and count down, um, I will have that on the website. And I might even, when I do that one, I was thinking of adding a just one transistor inside of here. So while it's counting, because the push button on the rotary encoder isn't used while it's counting, to be able to push that and turn the LCD on and off. Well, basically the backlight, the LCD would still be on, but you can turn the backlight on and off. And there's a little jumper right here. When you have this on, it's on. Otherwise, you can take it off and you can use a transistor to make the connection so that you can turn it on and off. Um, the characters will still show up. If you, know, if you hold it up to a light, you can see the characters. It just won't have the backlight. All right, I'll catch you at the computer in just a second, and we'll take a look at the sketch. All right, <clears throat> I have the Arduino IDE opened up here, and this is the sketch. So the first thing you're going to need, um, we got to include two libraries. The wire.h you should already have, but uh, the liquid crystal i2c. If you do not have this library, um, just look in the description below. Go to this project's webpage, and I have a link on there. It'll actually take you. I have a video and all the stuff where you can download the link. I got a video on how to set the, L the LCD up and how to set your address here, how to scan for the address. Now, most likely, this is going to be the address of your screen. This is commonly what they're, they're at, this right here. If you're having problems, check that video out. Otherwise, if you already have the Liquid Crystal I2C library, you're good to go. Just make sure there is a number of different Liquid Crystal libraries you want this particular one here, and you'll find, once again, a link to it on this project's webpage. All right, with that, um, we got the start button on pin four. Like I said, if you want to change what pin you're using, you can change that there. The encoder has to be on pin two and three on the Nano. Uh, Uno, I do believe, be the same. Just check. We're using interrupt pins. If for some reason you used a Mega, the interrupt pins are going to be different, so you're going to want to change that to correspond. You want it to be on an interrupt pin. And when you hook this up, if you turn it one way and uh, it's not counting the way you want, it's going backwards, just switch those two pins around. That's all you got to do is switch those two wires. And then the encoder button um, is on pin 5. <clears throat> all right, um, the rest of this you're going to want to leave alone or it's not going to work. So we need to scroll down. Now I have here a few things commented out. This is for testing. You'll see there's a couple sections of them in here. This is where when you're putting this together, if you want to test it instead of having the LCD hooked up, you can use the serial monitor with your Arduino IDE and just uncomment the stuff and then you will be able to display the readings on, on your computer screen. But you want to scroll down until you see this here and I marked it really good with a good comment here. Okay, I had, um, I thought I had it at 98 or something like that. I guess I, it was 992 for mine. <clears throat> if it's running a little too fast, a little too slow, this is where you play around. You don't have to change it by much, though. Just try one or two at a time. And to find out how accurate it is, let the timer run for an hour and then see if it's fast or slow. All right, with that... Uh, uh, I would not recommend changing anything unless you really know what you're doing because it'll it'll quit working super fast um, if you start changing things around and don't know what you're doing. If you do know what you're doing, feel free to play with it. Have fun. So with that, um, <clears throat> we'll wrap this up. I hope you have a great day and, well, have fun building your countdown timer.